Want to take a look at this? Thanks to Blue Cross's Walking Works for Schools program, Tennessee kids have walked over 17 million miles in the past five years. That's enough for 35 trips to the moon and back. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee is for Tennessee. Committed to getting kids walking and healthy. Get involved at bcbst.com slash impact. Take me home tonight. <laughs> You can choose the back seat or we'll choose one for you. There are many reasons why 96% of First Tennessee customers would recommend us. Here are a few. Well, what I love about First Tennessee is that everybody knows me when I walk through the door. They actually get excited when they see you walk into the branch, and I love that. They can't stop me from singing the praises of, of my bank. Would I go anywhere else? Absolutely not. I'm a 96. I'm a 96. I'm a 96. Are you a 96? Come see why 96% of our customers would recommend us. Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to Murphy Center on the campus of Middle Tennessee State University as the Blue Cross Championships continue here TSSAA style with Loretta and Jackson County, two teams that have been in the state tournament numerous times do battle here. The winner will take on Union City, a winner just 30 minutes or so ago in the state uh, semifinals on uh, 10, at 10 o'clock, make that 5.30 tomorrow afternoon. Tim Tackett with the play-by-play. -play. Joe Holloway, my running buddy from last week with the color, and Joe, uh, you talk about two teams with great tradition in state tournament basketball. It doesn't get any better than Jackson County Loretta. No, it goes all the way back to old six-player basketball. Joel Halfacre won a state championship or two with the team. And then uh, you remember the last double-A six-player game was Loretto versus Humboldt and Jennifer White, who later played at La Tech, as some people call it, Louisiana Tech was on that team, but they came up short. Well, you Humboldt. remember that, but, but I do remember that the last AAA contest was Riverdale-Warren County. Yes, it and, was. Uh, and the game, Riverdale was undefeated going into the championship game and lost that with Coach Buddy Pate, a good friend of mine right here in Murfreesboro, was on the end of that one. But Loretta, Jackson County playing for this one. Loretta comes in with a record of 18-15 and 15 in Jackson County with a record of, let me find that, 27-6. and 6, A little unusual for these teams to have so many losses, Joe, but they go outside of single-A basketball a lot to play, and that's where some, a lot of those losses will come from. Well, look at the two districts they're in. First of all, Jackson County's in there with Clark Range and Clay County, who's here at the state tournament. Okay, Loretta, on the other hand, is in with Wayne County, Collinwood, Summertown. And do I need to say anything else about that district? Th these two teams are from the middle Tennessee area, but different parts of the state, with uh, Loretta down in the southern part near the Alabama line, with Jackson County on the northern side of things, up near the Kentucky side of things. And, of course, Loretto had a tough early season, but they caught fire in the region tournament, and here they are. All right, Joe, we need to get two minutes in for the networks along the TSSAA network. You're listening to the Blue Cross Championship from Murphy Center. I really... The 2012 Blue Cross Basketball Championships are brought to you by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee, proud corporate sponsor of the TSSAA and by the Governor's Highway Safety Office, who reminds you, don't drink and drive. And by your local Tennessee public television stations, proud host of the 2012 Blue Cross Basketball Championship. I see history. I see numbers. I see music. I see spaceships. I see a butterfly. Each year, the School Advocates for Vision and Education in Memphis makes it possible for hundreds of school children to get the glasses they need, all for free. I see my future. So whatever they see, they see better. That's why Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee supports them. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee is for Tennessee. I see you. See how Blue Cross is impacting your community at bcbst.com forward slash impact. Because you can see forever from Signal Mountain. And with the right vision plan, you can see a whole lot more. Because five kids in Jackson means 40 bicuspids at the dentist. Because of a mobile site that helps you find a doctor. Because of small towns. 
big businesses, and partnering together for affordable solutions in health and wellness. Every policy tells a story. You carry us because we carry you. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee. Health. Wellness. Dental. Vision. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard right. graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program and participate in the TSSAA Network, go to tssaanetwork.com slash SBP. Welcome back into Murphy Center, Middle Tennessee State University. Joe Holloway along with Tim Tackett to bring you this basketball game between Loretta and Jackson County. Joe, to kind of make your point about Loretta, they had three games in district and then region play, and all three of their wins by single digits. To just let you know what the competition is like there. A little little easier time for Jackson County, but uh, there's nothing easy about what these teams play. Now, these two teams have met once already this year, but under a unusual circumstance, they were at the Mid-South Classic in Cookville. Loretta had already played one game and wound up having to play Jackson County, and they got beat 66-37, but here's the catch on that. It was a five-point contest at halftime in that one, and Loretta has improved since then. Good crowd in here all day today, Joe. This is the second game, second day tomorrow. The semifinals start at 10 o'clock in the morning. You've got six games tomorrow and then three state championships on, on uh, Saturday, and I tell you what, the way this one's really paired up, there's some great matchups still coming up. Oh, there are some great matchups to come up, and some of the semifinal games tomorrow are going to be knockdown, drag out, white knucklers, slobber knockers, if you like them. Let me throw one more thing that, that makes this game a little interesting, Tim. Last year, do you know who put Jackson County out in the first round of the state tournament? Well, I do know both teams were here, but I guess you're going to say Loretta. It was Loretto. So there's a little, I, I don't call it revenge, but uh, let's kind of get even for last Both year. Both teams were here last year. Loretta making its 15th appearance, one state championship, but it goes all the way back to 1958. Jackson County here now 16 times. They have seven state championships, Joe. Just two years ago, they were state champions. 32 and 8, their, their tournament record. That's a lot of basketball right here. Oh, uh, in state tournament play. You better believe it. A lot of tradition at both schools, and, and I'm going to tell you what, uh, it was it, it's something else. Now, two people that's missing from Loretta's team are Abby Laws and Becca Curtis, who led that victory, and they're both at Ball State playing basketball there. And I think the a matchup you want to watch tonight is Hensley from Jackson County versus Rachel Burden, the freshman post player. That could be a real knockdown rag. Watch that post area tonight. Loretta out of District 12, the fourth place team there, a winner over Cornersville and Collins, Collinwood to move to the region. Region 6 champions over Summertown and sectional champion over Middle Tennessee Christian School. For Jackson County, they get here by defeating Watertown, Clark Range, Clay County, and then Van Buren County. 78-37 in that contest. And we set this one up. Loretta and Jackson County, we need to get to a two-minute break for our local stations along the TSSAA network. The 2012 Blue Cross Basketball Championships are brought to you by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee, proud corporate sponsor of the TSSAA, and by the Governor's Highway Safety Office, who reminds you don't drink and drive, and by your local Tennessee public television stations, proud host of the 2012 Blue Cross Basketball Championships. Thanks to Blue Cross's Walking Works for Schools program, Tennessee kids have walked over 17 million miles in the past five years. That's enough for 35 trips to the moon and back. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee is for Tennessee. Committed to getting kids walking and healthy. Get involved at bcbst.com slash impact. Take me home tonight. <laughs> You can choose the back seat or we'll choose one for you.
one match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. Welcome back to the Blue Cross Championships right here from Middle Tennessee State University. Chip Walters on the play-by-play -play giving, on the PA I should say, giving the uh, the, uh, the full lineups, Joe, for all these teams. It's really neat that these kids get a chance to have their name called and walk out onto this floor in front of what is a really good crowd and a very loud crowd. It's going to be loud. It's going to be exciting. And these two teams are going to get after each well, other. Well, these two teams understand what winning's all about. They didn't come here to play. They came here to win. What is it they said in the musical Fiddler on the Roof? Tradition. Tradition. I think that's it. Let's get the starting lineup. First for the Lady Mustangs, of Loretta. They'll start this way. Rachel Burton starts. She's a six-foot freshman, along with Haley Farrington, a 5'10 senior. Sabri S Sermons, a six-foot freshman. Becca Rohde, 5'8". She's a junior. And Elizabeth Heeman, she is a 5'8 senior. So it's Burton, Farrington, Sermons, Rohde, and Heeman. For head coach Greg Tips, Loretta comes in at 18 and 15. For Jackson County, they'll start this way. Hope Scantlin, a 5'9 senior. J.C. Cole, a 5'10 sophomore. Caroline Warden, she's a senior 5'5". Brooklyn Apple, 5'9 junior. And Mackenzie Hensley, 6'4 junior. So it's Scantlin, Cole, Burden, Apple, and Hensley for head coach Jim Brown. 26, make it 27 and 6, the record for the Lady Blue Devils at Jackson County High School. And Joe, you and I... We, we really know how to pick a winner to get the broadcast, don't hey, we? Hey, we get all the good games now, Tim. Well, well, we'll hope that be the case. Tomorrow morning, play will be resumed here at Murphy Center. I invite you to come on out and just enjoy basketball. This is single A. Earlier today, Summertown, a winner over Lake County, 57-55. They'll take on Clay County, a winner over Cloudland, 55-43. As we mentioned prior to this one, Union City, a winner over Wartburg, 56-33. They will take on the winner of this contest in the semifinal play tomorrow evening. This game would be at 5.30. You're right, Tim. And TWSWA would thank, like to thank Rawlings for their support of the TWSWA Basketball Championship. And the official ball, game ball for today, is a Rawlings basketball. Burden steps in for Loretta along with Hensley for Jackson County. The ball is up in the air, and the Lady Mustangs win the white uniform, control the basketball. With it is Brody. He'll work it out the midcourt line, working against the Jackson County 2-3 zone. Around the perimeter, they're looking for something to open up. With it is Brody. The Heeman on the left wing. Not trying to penetrate yet against the zone. Jackson County extends it out just a little bit. The Heeman on the left side. Whip it inside, spinning it back out front. It's stolen away by Jackson County. Running down the floor comes Warden. She'll lay it up right now and score. And you'll see Jackson County drop back in that 2-3 zone. And Hensley will play behind the post players most of the time for Jackson County. With the basketball is Brody. Trying to solve this 2-3 zone. This can't be a surprise. They knew exactly what they were going to face when they got here. A lot of tape watch to keep it to him by both teams. We played a minute. 2-0. Jackson County on top. Heeman. Well, inside it goes to Burton. She spins it up. Rolls it and scores it. We're tied at two. Damn good move on the basket then. And like I said, this one's going to be a close ball game. Caroline Warden, first time they've been down Jackson County, has been on the offensive end of the floor. First time was on a breakout layup. Inside it goes to Hensley. She'll work it in the lane, steps and shoots and scores. She's just bigger than everybody else. She is deadly in there and she's got experience. Down the floor quickly runs Loretta. Sermons has it stolen away. Warden once again, she's one-on-one, -on -one, rolls it through the left hand, missed the shot, but a foul will be called. It looks like Becca Brody will be called for the first foul in this basketball game. Tim, I believe you're right, and Becca Brody did everything she could to stop that one. And sometimes you can get away with just a little nudge with the lower part of your body. And Brody is the, is the call. Shooting two will be Brooke make that Caroline Warden. The first one's up and good. 5-5 five, five senior. She has three points on the contest. Her team leads 5-2 very early here in Murfreesboro. Second free throw. Front of the rim, no good. Pulled out of there by Farrington. For Loretta, she brings it down the center of the court. Cut off. 
Kicks it back out front to Brody. Brody sets the offense again against the 2-3 zone. Top of the key with it. Farrington kicks it left side. Heeman fires a three. No good. Rebound inside on the lane. They pick it up finally. He is Apple for Jackson County. First quarter play, 5-2. Jackson County on top. Lob pass goes left side to Apple. Shoots it from the 15-footer. No good. Rebound on the floor. Kicked all the way back out front. Warden fakes a three, then spins it back to the top with the dribble. The Lady Mustangs are man-to-man. -man. Right side, Apple. Top of the key goes to Cole. Goes down the left side, lays up with the left hand, shot it short, no good. It's tipped around, picked up by Warden, and she's fouled. She tried to take it down the baseline. And Tim, the Lady Mustangs thought they had a teammate out there to tip it to, yeah. and she had already started advancing down the court. We know now the thumbs up play, they clear side, and they have a high screen and roll. Tough foul goes against Becca Brody. That's her second foul early in this contest, and she's going to go to the bench. Pass comes in to Scantlin for Jackson County. They're looking for Scantlin now on the right wing. Fakes a three, won't shoot it with the dribble. Left hand now right. Top of the key down the lane. She runs all the way through, pulls it up from five and hits. So far they've been able to penetrate and get those short shots in there. 7-2. The Lady Blue Devils on top. New, game, new lady in the game, Ashley Johns, penetrates, can't score. She'll run the point now, replacing Brody, who has the two fouls. Between the rings, lob inside. With it is Burden. Spins, has the ball blocked out of there. They're on the floor scrambling. Finally, Loretta pulls it out, and the shot is up and good by Haley Farrington. Farrington, nice usage of the left hand and used her body to shield off. Well, she did a good job of digging it out yeah. of there and then taking it straight to the bucket. Offensive end for Jackson County. Cole to Scantlin. Left-hand dribble. Cut off this time by Johns. Warden will reset against the man-to-man. -man. They clear out the right side. She gets a pick. Uses the left hand all the way through. Puts it up from seven feet. No good. Rebound out of there by Loretta. Farrington down the floor. She runs. Cut off. Still spins with the basketball. Left side. Hemans. Travels. She did at that. And I'll tell you what, Farrington's been active down there, hustling all the way. And watch this time with the man-to-man -man defense. Loretto has fought through some really great screens. Heeman wanted to shoot the three. A player ran at her, and she caused her to shuffle her feet. We played halfway through the first quarter. Jackson County leads 7-4. Pass goes inside off the hands of a Mustang, they say. So Jackson County will play it on from underneath the basket. Coe triggers it in. Way out front to Hensley. She won't shoot it there. She spins it to Coe. She'll take it to the right side. Puts it up. Puts it in. And she was fouled. We'll get a three-point play. Possibility the old-fashioned way. And that time got a step on there. Used her body well. And then banked it off the glass. Foul goes against Hemming. That is her first third-team foul against Loretta. And at the free throw line, Coe. Spins it out, no good. Farrington rebounds for the Lady Mustangs. Up to the front court they come. Ashley Johns. Ball almost stolen, but the official says that Hope Scantlin got arm instead of ball in the first foul of the contest for Jackson County will go against Hope Scantlin. And that's not a passive 2-3 zone by Jackson County. Very active. You know, they kind of pick their spots, don't they, Joe? They yeah. kind of sit back in there, and when they decide to attack, they all seem to go at once. Well, they lull you, lull you to sleep. Yep. And they're right now sitting back kind of like a cobra waiting to strike. Burden spins and shoots no good. Gets her own rebound. We'll put it back up in front. No good. Has the ball blocked out of there. And finally it goes out of bounds and it will go to Jackson County. Well, the high post area sometimes is open in a 2-3 or 2-1-2 two, two zone. They got it there but couldn't drill the shot. Jim Brown quite active in front of the... Jackson County bench. That's not unusual, is it, Joe? No, it's not unusual at all. Hope Scantlin, top of the key. Working against the man-to-man. -man. Kicks it left side. Warden gets a pick. Top of the key. Now scan all the way through. A little runner blocked out of there by Burden, and rebound comes off to Loretta. Johns down the center of the court. All the way through she goes. The ball tipped around. Finally gets it. Shot up. No good. Foul called. 
as picking it up in there was Rachel Burden. Took it up strong to the glass and was fouled. We'll shoot two free throws. And I think they're going to get Mackenzie Hensley on this one. And they did. They said she got her with the body that time. Two free throws coming for Rachel Burden. 2.57 to go in the first quarter. 9-4, make it 9-5 as Burden hits the free throw. Jackson County on top. Substitution in for Loretta. Caitlin McMahon checks in. Out goes Hemming. Second free throw coming for Burden. She now has four. She hits the free throw. 9-6, Jackson County with the basketball in that three-point lead. Jackson County four of eight from the field so far. Loretta just two of six. With the basketball is Warden. Kicks it on the left side. To Cole. Spins all the way through. Has a shot blocked from the backside, but the official says you got too much arm, and I believe that will go against Haley Farrington. That time Jackson County came out in what's called horns with two high posts, two people flat on the baseline. They try to play screen and roll. The other post steps off. They kick it back to her and then try to hit him, Hensley inside. First foul against Farrington. Two free throws coming for J.C. Coe. She hits the first, and that's her third point of the contest. I was looking on the wrong side of the scoreboard. Second free throw now coming. Jackson County on top, 10-6, 2.38, first quarter. String music two times. Jackson County, a very good free throw shooting team. Johns controls the basketball for the Lady Mustang. Running through the lane with the left-hand dribble is Farrington. Kicks it back out front to Johns. Fakes a three. Official says she stepped before she got the ball to the ground. She started to shoot, then she decided to take it to the hole, and by that time, she had already picked up her pivot Second foot. similar call against Loretta. Both of them right. And maybe a little bit of tournament jitters here, Joe. Uh, early in the contest, we've seen that all day. Caroline Warden controls the basketball. Still has it. Tries to go through, then goes to the floor. Jackson County able to recover. Scantlin picks it up off the floor and gets it back out front to Warden once again. Left side, right side, he goes to Apple. Won't shoot the three to Coe. Inside two minutes. Warden with it. Spins it inside. Shot up and rolling. No good. Rebound comes off. Burden for Loretta. The Lady Mustangs trailing five up the floor. Johns. They look inside. Can't get it in there to Farrington right now. Barrington and Burden running the double low post. Him and back in the contest. Left side baseline shot no good. Farrington shot it all the way over the goal and landed right in the hands of J.C. Coe. Coe gives it up to Warden, fakes a three, won't shoot it, dribbles to the top of the key. Continues with the dribble, now gives it right side to Apple. We approach the one-minute mark. Jackson County with the basketball and a five-point lead. Hensley kicks it across, left side. Apple shoots and scores from about the left elbow. And she was balanced and measured that one out and dropped it. They, Hensley got the double team and threw out of it. Very nice, a three-pointer in the air from Loretta. No good, and rebound comes off to Hensley for Jackson County with 55 seconds. They come to the front court. Caroline Warden, let's see if they might not look for a last shot of this quarter. And that kind of looks the way it's going to go. And I think Loretta's going to be content to let them run the thing down. Loretta stands and watch. Caroline Warden dribble near the midcourt stripe. Ten feet away from her is Sabrina. Uh, make it Sabri Sermons, but she's making no attempt to come at her. We're down to 25 seconds. Warden just uh, dribbling back and forth. Nice time for a song, Joe. Well, you could. In the old days, team started at 15 seconds, their offense. Now it's getting closer to 10 before they start their well, offense. Well, they're at 10 now. Warden will run it with seven seconds. One-on-one, -on -one, they clear out the top of the lane. Spins it all the way through, kicks it out the top, and goes out of bounds off the hands of Cole. 1.7, long way to go for the Lady Mustangs to get, a, get one to the rim, but uh, you never know. Yesterday in this tournament, Tim, we saw a 55-footer and a 45-footer. One of these the situations that, Joe, you need to practice every day to make sure you can't give up an easy one and Loretta's not able to get off a shot. One quarter in the books, 13-6, Jackson County on top. You're listening to 
The Blue Cross Championships on the TWSAA Network. One minute for our network. Hey, you want to take a look at this? Thanks to Blue Cross's Walking Works for Schools program, Tennessee kids have walked over 17 million miles in the past five years. That's enough for 35 trips to the moon and back. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee is for Tennessee. Committed to getting kids walking and healthy. Get involved at bcbst.com slash impact. You can choose the back seat or we'll choose one for you. Tim Tackett, Joe Holloway back at Murphy Center. Jackson County has the basketball to start the second quarter, leading 13 to 6, and they'll throw it in to Caroline Warden. Looking inside. Casey, J.C. Coe is posted up in there, and boy, they're really banging, Joe. They really are. Three-pointer up, Apple. It is good. It tried to crawl out of there, but wouldn't do it. Went down finally through the net. Had enough of that backspin on it to keep it down. 16-6, the lead has grown to 10 for Jackson County. Loretta needs to pick up some offense. Really have had a tough time against this 2-3 Jackson County zone. They really have. Hadn't hit anything from outside yet. Johns has the ball tipped out of there. Warden got into the passing lane, couldn't control it, but did knock it into the Jackson County bench. A couple substitutions in for Jackson County. Barrington back in as well as Becca Brody. Brody had two fouls very early in the contest, but will now play the point. Gets it on the left wing, dribbles to the right side to Hemming, to Brody. Right side it goes to Sermons. Hemmons fakes the three, can't shoot it. Working the high post is Rachel Burden. Down the baseline runs Sermons. Missed the shot. Ball pulled out of there by Mackenzie Hensley. Just kind of got it flat-footed. A little bit flat-footed on that one. And, Tim, they're going to have to set some screens even on a zone on the outside so they can get some outside shots. Jackson County with a double-digit lead with the basketball. Warden down the left side feeds it inside to Hensley. She scores it off the glass, 18-6. The lead is 12. Timeout. Loretta, let's take 30 seconds for our local stations along the TWSAA network. Because you can see forever from Signal Mountain. With the right vision for Greg Kipps of Loretta finding this one, getting away from him a bit. 18-6, Loretta is trailing Jackson County as the Lady Mustangs bring it down the floor. Six and a half minutes to go second quarter. So there's still a lot of basketball to play. Sermons hits the shot on the right wing. Well, they that, called the right play, didn't they? Called the right play. That one kind of crawled over, but it was a nice shot, a line drive. And you got to win more possessions than the other team in a basketball game. Sermons' first two of the contest. Jackson County with it. Posting up in there is Hensley. They can't get it to her. Caroline Warden down the left side goes, and nobody picked her up from the weak side, Joe, and she just laid it in. You have got to help, and you've got to help early. Sermons. Hemmons on the left wing. Whip it inside. Shot missed but fouled as Haley Farrington cut through. Got the basketball. Mackenzie Hensley got her as she went up. For the Tim, shot. I believe that'll be her second foul, and that could be an item. Well, they'll want to keep Mackenzie Hensley in the basketball game. She's 6'4", and by far the tallest player on the floor, and, and they really have paid a lot of attention to her. She is a force on the low blocks. Farrington puts the first one up and good, and out will come Hensley with those two fouls. Back in, in, in the contest for the first time, I should say, Jackson County, Katie Hall. She is 5'9", is a sophomore. So you go from 6'4 to 5'9", that does change the complexion a little bit. Second free throw is nothing but net. It does change uh, the complexion. Jackson County is 8 for 13, 62%. Loretto 3 for 10 from the field for 
Barrington's fourth point cuts the lead to 10. It's 20-10, five and a half, make it 5.40 to go. Long three, Scantlin out front, didn't get iron, and we'll bring it back the other way. Tim, a little shooting lesson there. You gotta bend those knees if you're gonna shoot that three, and she was a little bit stiff. The arm and everything was accurate, but you gotta have that leg power. The Lady Mustangs from Gaines make that uh, Loretta, Tennessee, down south of here. Up to four they come. Sherman, left side it goes. Up to Farrington. Top of the key, Sherman has it again. The left side, Brody. Brings it out near the midcourt stripe. They're playing pitch and catch, Farrington and Brody. Brody has it back. Want to go to the top of the key. Finally down the baseline running, missed the shot. Was well, Sermon. They battle for a rebound in the corner and will go Jackson County's way as we come 94 feet. Tim, the shot's still not falling, and that makes them uh, three for 11 and drops down to about 28% shooting. Remind those that are listening in, if you're near a computer, click on the TWSAA.org and go down to this game and, and, and the video, and you can see a beautiful picture of this basketball game that we're looking on the computer here, Joe. It's beautiful. Jackson County scores as I'm talking. Caroline Warden cut through the lane, and they just not had an answer for the penetration that Jackson County has. 22-10, the Lady Blue Devils on top. Sermon's long three up in the air. This one comes from Farrington. I'm sorry. Make that Becca Brody. Becca Brody's first points of the contest, and that was a long one. And well, Loretta one for three from the three-point line. 22-13, Jackson County's lead is nine. Running in with a shot, and Warden had it slapped away and stolen. Coming back the other direction is Farrington. Through the lane she goes, tries to split the finish, puts it up to the left hand, rolls it over the rim. No good. They're on the floor battling, still battling. Where's the whistle? There it is. Let's see who's got the position here. It goes, stays with Loretta. Looked like we were looking for contact lens then, but everybody wanted it because they thought it was theirs. From the baseline. Burden gets it out front, missed the shot from about eight feet away, pulled out of there by Jackson County's Katie Hall. To the front court they come. 22-13, midway through the second quarter. Final game of today's action here at Murphy Center. Six games have been played. We'll have six tomorrow. Crossover dribble, shot up. Warden, no good. Rebound flat-footed, picking it out of there is Rachel Burden. Loretta to the front court. Brody. And Hemman, right wing will be Farrington. She has it right now. Make it Sermons to Brody. Brody hit from there just a minute ago. Fires it again. This one's short, no good. Rebound comes off into the hands of Haley Farrington. Just kind of caught it and stuck it right back in. And right now, Coach Jim Brown can't believe nobody blocked out. The lead down to seven. It was the biggest 12. Loretta trying to crawl back in it. J.C. Coe, top of the key, fires off a long three, and boy, that was a nice-looking shot. And she was on the mark then. Had a little bit of pressure, but it didn't matter. Didn't phase her. Brody, right side to Sermons. Back out to Brody. She tries to answer with a three. It is short, no good. Rebound pulled out of there nicely by J.C. Coe, and Jackson County wants to run. Coe still has it. Top of the key, lob it inside. Shot up. Official says travel beforehand. I think that's correct. Brooklyn Apple didn't know she was as open, Joe, as she turned out to be. Well, that's kind of like tiptoeing through the tulips right there, the way <laughs> she skipped. But uh, Cole, of course, a, a good long-distance bomber. That's one reason you hadn't seen any help, Tim. When they drive on Cole's side, they're afraid to come off of her because they know they'll kick it back out to her. Becca Brody will walk it down the floor for Loretta. They trail 25-15, 2.35 to go, second quarter. Ashley Johns. Caitlin McMahon, new in the game for Loretta. Whip it inside, spinning with it is Farrington. Shot up, blocked out of there, no good. Pulled out, now Jackson County. Hope Scantlin gives it up to Warden. Slowly to the front court. Picked up there by Becca Brody. Scantlin. Kick it left side, three in the air. It is rattling out of there, no good. Jackson County rebound put back up and no good, but Katie Hall was fouled. Joe, that ball was all the way down and it jumped out. It will come out sometime. It does funny things, the angles, and if you get a chance, they give us one of those shots of the rim. Watch how free throws either go through or bounce off of that rim. 
This time they're going to stay with the long shot. Foul one against Caitlin McMahon. That is her first. Two free throws for Katie Hall. She hits the first one. Barrington goes to the Loretta bench. Now check this one out, Tim. This is the one I said about the shot here for those of you watching the game. Free throw, nothing but net. Isn't that a great shot? It is a great shot. Got some little munchkin up there with that camera? No, we've just got some great people. 27-15. <laughs> Jackson County on top. Loretta with the basketball. Brody can't shoot. They set it up 2-3. 2-1-2 actually to match up that 2-3 zone. Burden, top of the key to Johns. Runs all the way through, puts it up with the left hand nicely. No good, but Burden rebound, put back, no good. And again, Jim Brown up wanting to know where is the, the, off, the defensive rebounding position. He's going to, I have a feeling he's going to be a little upset at halftime. I'd like to be a fly on the wall as he talks about rebounding. Foul went against... Hall, two free throws for Burden. She hits the first one, hit the front of the rim, and just crawled right on over. And Tim, that's the fifth offensive rebound for uh, Loretta. Burden now three of three, make it four of four from the free throw line. And her sixth point cuts the lead back to 10, 27-17. A minute and a half to go in the second quarter. Caroline Warden in no hurry for the blue-clad Lady Blue Devils. She'll stand near the midcourt stripe, and I think Jackson County is going to be content to run off about 70 seconds if uh, Loretta will let them do it. Yeah, and it buys time while Hensley's on the bench. Coach Greg Tiff telling his players to come out and play just a little bit. Yeah, come on out and play them, he says. Warden has it. They're going to play cat and mouse now. Double teamed out front, but she's able to throw out of it to Apple. Jackson County making no attempt to go to the basket. Warden and Apple playing keep away. Lob it inside. Scanlon will bring it back out now. They've taken about half that time off. 38 seconds, 37, 36. Jackson County up 10. Looking now for the last shot for sure. They spread the floor. There's not anybody inside the three-point lane. We'll make that. I take that back. Jackson County has one way down on the baseline, kind of hidden. 17 seconds. Warden. Now Loretta backs up, expecting her to go one-on-one. -on -one. Warden with seven. Gets a pick. All the way through she goes. Left hands it up. Good. Boy, that great move for Caroline Warden, and she scores to give her team a 29-17 halftime lead, a fifth point, as the teams will go to the locker room. And that is the score at the half. Jackson County, 29, Loretta, 17. We're going to take a two-minute break along the TWSWA network. You're listening to the Blue Cross Championships. The 2012 Blue Cross Basketball Championships are brought to you by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee, proud corporate sponsor of the TWSWA and by the Governor's Highway Safety Office, who reminds you, don't drink and drive. And by your local Tennessee public television station, proud host of the 2012 Blue Cross Basketball Championship. Hey, wanna take a look at this? Thanks to Blue Cross's Walking Works for Schools program, Tennessee kids have walked over 17 million miles in the past five years. That's enough for 35 trips to the moon and back. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee is for Tennessee. Committed to getting kids walking and healthy. Get involved at bcbst.com slash impact. Take me home tonight. <laughs> You can choose the back seat or we'll choose one for you.
match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're gonna come at you. One shot at this. And we are back at the Glass House, better known as MTSU, Middle Tennessee State University, the Blue Cross Girls Division I Championship Series here. We're in opening round action in single A. And with me is Kim Van Atta of the Governor's Highway Safety Office. And Kim, at the end, the announcer always says, click it or ticket and don't let friends drive impaired. That says it all right that there. That does say it all. That's the message we're trying to get out, and I think that's the message we have gotten out. I mean, we have partners all over the place, even the announcers saying booze it and lose it, click it or ticket. So if we can keep that going and the education that we have started, if we can keep it going, I think we'll be doing a good job. You know, and again, I'm always coming up with ideas, but wouldn't it be nice at every sporting event in the state of Tennessee, that was the last thing said by whoever the public address announcer is? Well, I mean, that's what you need to get in their head before they're going out to their cars. Tell them. Click it or ticket, booze it and lose it. That's the last thing they hear. Maybe that'll make a difference when they get in that car. Hopefully so. And, of course, talking about making a difference, we always like to talk about it because there are always people question how their tax money is being spent. But uh, for the last eight years, correct me if I'm wrong, but for the last eight years, the deaths in the state of Tennessee has gone down every year. Every single year we've gone down in fatalities, and I think it's a large part the awareness. We are, our agency is a behavioral agency. We're trying to get these people to change their actions. We're being a, taking a proactive approach. So we're trying to prevent things from happening rather than dealing with them as they happen. I mean, you saw today a Summertown team, and they lost one of their players earlier in the year to a crash. And they've pulled together. They won the game. The game is not the important thing. But you just think, I think there were two other people on the car. That life has been lost needlessly. And that community and that family will never get over that. You know, that might have been the young person that would have uh, come up with a cure for cancer or done something like that, yet that life is lost. That life is lost forever, and the families will never be the same. Jim, let's talk about uh, one of my favorite people, Stephen Bargatza, and all the other programs you've got. I'll let you tell them about the programs, but then tell folks how they can get in touch with your agency so that they can take part and have these come to their city or school. Stephen Bargatze is a world-class magician, and he travels statewide to middle schools and high schools and gives a booze it and lose it, cook it or ticket presentation. He is incredible, and I've received several emails and letters from administrators at the schools who say what a great job he's done and he's kept the students attention so he's really getting that message across where we need to get it this demographic this young these young kids who are just beginning to drive this target audience is so important because they're not very good drivers there are so many distractions and if we can keep them focused on driving when they get behind the wheel of that car that's our job he, his presentation and i've seen this several times it has such an impact on these kids, not even behind, not just behind the wheel, but in their regular lives. So he's doing a fantastic job. If they want to get in touch with us, all they have to do, when you get on an email, Governor's Highway Safety Office or on our website and get to us through email there, or you can call at 615-253-5519, and someone will be happy to get in touch with you. I mean, if we're talking to educational institutions, the the banners that we have in the gym, we can send those to them free of charge and they can post them in their schools. Oh, that would be great. And of course, you can always go on the internet. If you don't have the phone number, you don't have a piece of paper to write it down, go on the internet, look under Tennessee State Government, guarantee you the Governor's Highway Safety Office has a phone number listed in there with personnel and people you can contact. And I guarantee you, if you want to talk to Kim and she's in the office, course, she is busier than a cat on a hot tin roof covering the state of Tennessee, delivering the message. She'll talk. No problem. Safety with you, and then she'll talk a little basketball. Absolutely, with you. both. And she can do that. People may forget she was a great player, but she also coached basketball for a few years and uh, was a great coach at that. But what she's doing now may be more important than coaching. Matter of fact, there's no maybe it about is, it. It is more important than what I'm doing, but I get to enjoy the games as well. She sure does. Kim, gonna hit it again. Lose your license, 
your freedom and your yeah. or your life. What a great slogan and reminder. Exactly, and it's it's progressive. I mean, you lose your license, that absolutely destroys a kid, taking them away from them. And then your freedom, they're in jail, they can't do anything, but ultimately your life, everything's gone. They play on words. That's a sobering thought. That is a very sobering thought. It is. Kim, last game of the day, your last thoughts for the day. My last thoughts for the day is when you go out there and this weather is crazy, it's raining, you slow down, you buckle up, and just go straight home. You don't have to stop and get a drink or anything. You go straight home and get ready for the games tomorrow. Absolutely. Kim, we enjoy it. Look forward to talking to you tomorrow. And remember the Governor's Highway Safety Office. We're going to take a one-minute local timeout, a one-minute local timeout. You're listening to the Blue Cross Basketball Championships on the TSSAA Network. Want to take a look at this? Thanks to Blue Cross's Walking Works for Schools program, Tennessee kids have walked over 17 million miles in the past five years. That's enough for 35 trips to the moon and back. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee is for Tennessee. Committed to getting kids walking and healthy. Get involved at bcvst.com slash impact. You can choose the back seat or we'll choose one for you. Welcome back to the Murphy Center, Middle Tennessee State University on the campus. The uh, Blue Cross Championship, Tim Tackett, along with Joe Holloway. Joe, at the half, Jackson County leads it 29-17, to 17, and I'll let you go through the stats a little bit as we get ready for this second half to begin. Man, let's go through there for Jackson County with 29 points. Hope Scanlon has two. J.C. Cole has seven. Caroline Warden has nine points. Brooklyn Apple has five. Mackenzie Hensley has four, and Katie Hall has two. They are shooting 55% from the field, 11 for 20, and only three Jackson County turnovers at this point in time, 12 rebounds. Four Loretto with 17 points. Rachel Burden has six points. Haley Farrington, four. Sabri Sermones has four. Also, Becca Brody has three for 17 points. They have four turnovers. They're shooting 26.3% from the field. That's five for 19. 13 rebounds. Five of them are offensive rebounds. And that pretty well tells your story. That shooting percentage is killing Loretto right well, now. Well, Jackson County has led from the, from the beginning. It stretched out to 10 points fairly early in the contest, and they've controlled the game. We'll see if the Lady Mustangs are able to crawl, crawl back in. And Jackson County will work to the left here in the second half as they have the ball to start it out. Caroline Warden will run the point out front, now spinning it out to J.C. Cole. Lob it inside, shot blocked from the backside nicely by Loretta, and the Lady Mustangs will bring it to their first possession of the second half. Long three by Heeman. No good. Rebound pulled out Warden. So both teams draw blanks the first trip down the floor in the second half. Tim Loretta staying with their man-to-man -man defense or player-to-player. -player. Apple to Cole. They look inside to Hensley with the two fouls. She's back in the contest. Crossover dribble Warden all the way through off the glass and rolls it in. And Warden split them again, and the help was slow getting there. Warden, the first player to double figure. She has 11. 31-17, biggest lead of the contest for Jackson County. We played a minute in the second half. Sermon, left side it goes to Farrington. Puts it up, blocked out. I believe that was Hensley that got a hand on the she basketball. Was Hensley, and she was told by her coach, nothing but hands straight reaching for the top of the ceiling. Farrington plays it from underneath the goal. All the way out to Hemming. Right wing, Sermons can't shoot against a very active 2-3 Jackson County zone. Sermons down the baseline, shot missed, standing in there to get it is Hensley. She'll give it up right now to Warden to the front court. She'll walk it now. Breaking down defensively is Brody. They go one-on-one. -on -one. Warden still with the basketball. Lob it inside, Hensley. 
Give and go, up with the left hand shot missed. Pulled out of there now by Rachel Burden. And Burden altered that shot. Long pass down the floor and scoring right now is Savory Sermons. And a timeout is called by Loretta. Let's get a quick 30 second timeout for our local stations along the TSSAA network. In the third quarter, the Lady Blue Devils on top by 12, 31-19. Brooklyn Apple has the ball stolen away. Hemming will come down. She's got two players trailing her all the way up. Puts it up and good. Notice how she protected it with her body and banked it off the glass. She had two players on her, but they were both about a half step behind, and the lead is back to 10, 31-21. Scoring raises defensive intensity. Lob pass inside to Hensley. Wants to make a move, spins. Will shoot it now and scores. I'll tell you what, Rachel Burden did all she could do, and Hensley still shot over it. Hensley just put it above her head and is strong enough to shoot that shot. The lead back to 12, which is what it was at the half. We played a couple minutes now in the third quarter. Hemman with the basketball top of the key. Whip it across to Johns. Fires a three. It is no good. Rebound push. Foul against Jackson County as Brooklyn Apple rode out a player from Loretta, and the foul was called. Well, you could see Sermons moved unceremoniously under the goal that time. First foul of the second half. Long pass comes in to Hemman. Top of the key. Right wing. Brody will fire it up now and score. They just left her alone. Well, Brody drilled that one. And watch her defensive intensity pick up right here. And Jim Jack Brown doesn't yeah. like any of that at all. He's, he's telling his kids, you can't stand there and let people do that. Let's get another 30-second timeout. Joe, we'll be right back in Murfreesboro for the TSSAA championship. Loretta's cut it to nine with 5.05 to go. Joe Holloway, tell us about the good folks that bring us the TSSAA championship. Well, there are a lot of people. Chocolate milk, the official drink of the TSSAA and healthy athletes across Tennessee. Thanks to our Tennessee dairy farmers for providing such a naturally nutritious way to fuel up our bodies. And are you on Facebook? Well, you need to follow Blue Cross Basketball Facebook page at www.facebook.com slash bball to stay updated on news and scores. I got a feeling Jim Brown got it straightened out how that zone's going to be played the next trip down the floor. Rather emphatically. <laughs> Jackson County with the basketball, leading by nine still. Caroline Warden near the midcourt stripe. Gets a pick. Takes it to the left hand, gives it to Hensley. Kick it across on the right side. Scantling won't shoot. Loretta's picked up the defensive intensity just a bit. You usually see that after a couple of buckets. Warden still with it to Hensley. Lob it inside. Working with it is Cole. She'll put it up in his foul. They brought the big girl out to the top and ran another player inside, and Cole will shoot two free throws after getting the nice pass. That's a good high-low setup then. Burden's first foul of the contest will send J.C. Cole to the free throw line. And as I told you earlier, this is a very good free throw shooting team, Jackson County. And they are 5-4, or, or actually 6-8, I believe now. First one was up and good, and one more coming for Cole. Cole with seven points on the contest. Rattles, good. 
Cole now three of four at the line. The lead back to 11. Loretta. Needs points about every trip down the floor, I think, because Jackson County's not going to quit scoring, I wouldn't think. Johns down the right side. Can't get it to the top of the key as Farrington works there. Farrington now on the baseline, has the ball tipped away and stolen. Running out with it is Cove for Jackson County. Top of the key, spins it now to Warden. Left-hand dribble all the way through, kicks it in the, on the baseline, can't shoot it. Is Warden. She'll dribble back out to the top. Kind of gotten quiet in the gymnasium. Well, it really has, and the, and the pace has quietened down the play as to the noise level. Scantlin. Hensley holds the ball high above her head at the top of the key. Right wing now, Cove gets a pick. Left hand dribble, free throw line. All the way through, kicks it in the corner. Firing a three is Cantlin. It is rattling out, no good. Hammond with the rebound for Loretta. Down the floor she comes. Still has the basketball cut off by Scantlin. Gets it to Johns, back to her. Now getting into the play will be Becca Brody. Top of the key, Hemming all the way through. The ball tipped away and finally picked up in there by Jackson County. Then it's stolen back away by Burden. Three in the air, John. Back of the rim, no good. Tracking it in the corner is Warden for Jackson County, but she couldn't hang on to it. Last touch, she reached out that one little last time and uh, might have been their ball had she not reached out. Three minutes exactly third quarter. Jackson County leads 35-24, Loretta with the basketball. Johns, inside it goes to Burden. Spins off the right side, no good on the shot. Put back on the rebound. Let's check a number. I'm not sure if that was. Farrington. Yeah, Farrington, Farrington with okay. a great effort then. I couldn't see 32 or 22. Well, I was trying to look through the referee's back. We were screened to be sure. Jackson County up nine with the ball. Going to Hensley. She spins, nice feed right side to cutting Scantlin as the double team came. Hensley threw out of it. And whoever's man double teams, you cut to the basket. Johns behind the back through the lane. Fakes, can't shoot, gives it up, ball loose. Picked up Loretta, blocked out of there on the shot. Hensley got a hand on it as Farrington tried to score. Farrington, though, had courage to take it into the land of the Giants, and it was tight quarters. And came close to drawing a third foul on Hensley. Sabre Simone's back in the contest replacing Johns. Burden gets the inbounds pass and passes to the right wing to him, and then we've got an illegal pick away from the well, you basketball. You've got a foul on a push off, I think it's going to be on Farrington. You got it right. Second foul against Farrington. Jackson County, 11 points in the basketball. The winner to take on Union City tomorrow at 5 30. Hensley with the pass inside, missed the shot. Rebound pulled out of there by Burden. Quickly down the floor, Loretta didn't have numbers. Firing three. Hemming, short, no good. They battle for a rebound on the floor and out running with it is Cole. She's one on three. Thinks better of it. Kicks it to the top to Hensley. And let's just slow her down. Yep. How many times you see Hensley miss that point blank shot? Not many. Brooklyn Apple. Ball between her, uh, under her arm, finally gives it up. J.C. Cole. Crosses over, goes all the way through, puts it off the glass, no good. Hensley fights for a rebound, can't get it. Farrington pulls it out. Goes down the left side, all the way through. Nice pass, and then stealing it away for Jackson County is Warden. She's one-on-one. -on -one. All the way through, off the glass, no good. Rebound will come the other way. Here yeah. comes Loretta. In the end action, Tim. Farrington can't shoot, kicks it back out to the top, will set it. Becca Brody, she counts numbers. Greg Tiff says, let's go. We got things going our way. Brody fakes a three. Right side, it goes to Sermons. Inside spinning with it is Burden. Missed the shot. Hensley rebounds. Kick, gives it up quickly. Caroline Burden. She'll let the traffic clear. We're inside of a minute. We know what Jackson County does when they have the basketball inside of a minute. Yeah, they're going to hold it even if you bring the pressure out. They're going to shoot the last second shot. Or at least attempt to do so. Very disciplined team. Hope Scantlin back out front to Warden. 20 seconds. She'll go up the left hand and score. You know, she's tough with that left hand. She is, and she's made a living driving to the basket. Quickly down the floor comes 
Loretta, J.C. make that uh, Sermons with eight, seven seconds. Inside it goes to Farrington. Spins off of the Jackson County player with 4.73 substitutions for Loretta. They really want to score off this out-of-bounds play. Let's see. This will tell us what one of their top three out-of-bounds plays is. They look for Burden. Can't get it to her. In the corner, firing the three is Hemmons. And the quarter will come to an end on the three-point shot by Elizabeth Hemmons. She has five on the contest. It's 39-29. We've got eight minutes to go. You're listening to the Blue Cross Championships along the TSSAA Network. I really do see the... Want to take a look at this? Thanks to Blue Cross's Walking Works for Schools program, Tennessee kids have walked over 17 million miles in the past five years. That's enough for 35 trips to the moon and back. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee is for Tennessee. Committed to getting kids walking and healthy. Get involved at bcbst.com slash impact. You can choose the back seat or we'll choose one for you. Jim Tackett and Joe Holloway proud to bring you TSSAA basketball from Murfreesboro. 29 for the Lady Mustangs of Loretta as they trail by 10, but they have the basketball to start the fourth quarter. Johns. As it works against that Jackson County 2-3 zone. Johns can't do anything with it. Gives it up to McMahon. She's on the baseline. The ball tipped and almost stolen. We've got a foul called. I thought maybe a held ball, but McMahon will be called for the reach. And that is her first foul of the contest. And I think she got the worst end of that deal. Got one across the face. She did, Tim. And you can't throw that bat. Once you drive like that, you cannot throw the bounce pass to your post player if they're standing straight up like that. You need to kick it outside or try to throw your jump shot up there. McMahon's second foul, third team foul against Loretta in the second half. Jackson County with the basketball. Caroline Warden controls it. She has 13 points leading all scorers today. To Hensley, looks for Warden, gives it to her. Warden, the fine senior guard for the Jackson County Lady Blue Devils. Has it with the left hand to Hensley. Won't shoot from 17 feet. They just back away from her, and we've got something away from the basketball. And a hold is called. Check a number. 45, Elizabeth Hemmen. The call goes against Loretta. Tim, here come some of the people that log long minutes. They got a quick rest at the end. They got a little instruction there back in for Loretta. Hemmen with her second foul. Jackson County has it. Seven minutes to go right now as Hensley just holds it high above her head. Gives it up now to Hope Scantlin. To Warden. They clear the top of the key. Double high pick. Warden lobs it inside to Hensley. Turns, shoots, and missed it. Rebound comes off into the hands of Harrington. Two on two, Loretta. Harrington down the lane. Kicks it back out top. Brody. Once the three can't shoot it, there's a travel, no call. Shot missed inside, and Hensley pulls off the rebound. I don't need the referee over here. I got enough to do. <laughs> uh, I don't blame you, Tim. I'm, I've been through this before, and, and right now, Coach Tips has got to be a little, little frustrated because their kids are playing hard. It's just not falling, and then a few things happen. Caroline Warden with the basketball. Goes with the left hand, cut off, nicely done. Now goes all the way through, lays it up and in. She is just extremely quick and tenacious, tenacious about getting to the basket. She really is. Somebody's going to have to give help really early and maybe try to take a charge. Inside the pass goes him and puts it up off the glass and scores as the ball came through the net. She smacked it in very quickly. Goes to the official and said, I didn't mean to do that. It was just reaction. Yeah, she got that, two, and she's going to have a chance at a three-point play. That's not one you would want to call a technical on there. Team's 
I think she was so excited she pumped her fist and just happened to hit the basketball, I believe. It, it got in the way of her fist. <laughs> Official did a nice job of a no call. Hemman trying to get the three-point play the old-fashioned way and does. And now you need a good defensive stand if you're the Lady Mustangs of Loretto. That's for sure. Hemman has seven. 41-32, Jackson County and the basketball. A lot of movement by Jackson County. Warden lob it inside off the foot of a Jackson County player, but it's pulled out of there now by Loretta. It's two on one, left side all the way through Hemman. Almost out of control, missed the shot. And we'll come the other way. Warden lets the traffic clear. Smartly played. Timeout, Jackson County leading 41-32 with 5.19 to go. 30 seconds as you listen to the Blue Cross Championships on the DSSAA Network. Welcome back to Murphy Center on the campus of Middle Tennessee State University. The final game of today's contest. Earlier in single A play, Summertown a winner over Lake County 57-55, Clay County over Cloudland 55-43, and Union City over Wartburg 56-33. Union City and the winner of this contest, Joe, will take on, will play for a semifinal berth tomorrow at 5.30 to wrap up tomorrow's action. And there's gonna be some great semifinal games tomorrow, some great matchup ranked teams Teams with college signees on them. Everything will be well, happening. a lot of people, the Friday is the, the is the day to come to the tournament. Six really good games. Oh, it's going to be great. And it determines who's going on. But you're right. There are people that that's the only uh, day they come to. Lawrence, make that uh, Jackson County with the basketball as we start play back. Five minutes almost as we play. 5.05 as the ball goes out of bounds. And Jackson County will retain possession. J.C. Coe smartly just let it roll out of bounds. She did, and a very good-looking sophomore as a basketball player has a good hesitation dribble. Lob it in to Warden. Dribbles to the top of the key. Checked out there by Becca Brody. She's got her hands full. Warden all the way through. Runner in front. Rolled it out. No good. Brody rebounds. Looks for someone to pass it to. Now finally gives it up to Elizabeth Hemmen. Back to Brody. Time drawing short for Loretta. They're going to need to make something happen here fairly quickly if they're going to cut into this nine-point lead a bit more. Brody fakes the three to Johns. Right side, steps up off the glass, rolls it out. No good. Tough break there. That would have been big if that one had fallen. Hensley with the rebound for Jackson County. Now, again, you've got to play really good defense and get possession, not give up a score if you're Loretta. In either way, Jackson County's not likely to shoot it quickly. Hensley on the block, puts it up with the left hand, blocked out of there nicely by Burden. Loretta back the other direction. Down nine, long three, no good. Rebound picked off the floor by Hope Scantlin for Jackson County. Inside four minutes. As Caroline Warden will just walk it up the floor. Carries it with the dribble to the left side to Hensley's top of the key. Back it goes to Warden. Official now starts to count, but she gives it up. Lob to Hensley. Wants to make a move on Burden. Does, spins. Puts it up. Burden got a hand on it. They call a foul. And I think there was a little indecision about that. And if you watched, Hensley was trying to feel for position and you know which way to spin off of her. And Burden was backing off. If she'd not put her hands on her back, Hensley would not have known which way to spin. You know, Joe, as I've watched this playing Hensley, she's 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 tall and she has a lot of bulk. Really, to me, the best way to play her is to is to play off of her some. Give yourself a chance to to uh the shot to, to block the shot away from her and, and not lay on her quite so much. Do not let her find you with her body because that's how she knows which way to turn. That's Jim. correct. First free throw is missed. Second free throw is good. Fifth, make it 42-32 as that is seven points now for 
Mackenzie Hensley, she is a junior. Loretta, lob inside to Burden, spins quickly off the glass, no good, rebound, fought for and pulled out by Jackson County. Scantlin now has it, gives it up to Warden. And Warden will work it up the floor. Met now at the half court line by Brody. Loretta's gonna have to pick up the tempo defensively. Lob inside, weak side to Cole, shot up and good. And uh, you're right, Tim. Loretto's got to score here and regroup, and I think they're going to call a timeout. Timeout on the floor, 2.51 to go in the fourth quarter, 44-32. Make that uh, Jackson County on top. We'll take 30 seconds along the TWSAA network. Jackson County leads 44-32, 2.51 to go in this contest. Joe Holloway, what do you got to say? Well, first of all, let me say this. TWSAA Network is the official sports network for the TWSAA. Visit TWSAANetwork.com to watch coverage of the best Tennessee high school sports. Okay, here it comes, Tim. You're right. you got to get up and play. I like white on rice, cornbread and onion breath defense. you got to have a lot of stops. you got to take the ball to the hole. And you're not hitting threes right now. If you're Loretto, you're only hitting 25% of your three-pointers. Jackson County, of course, is going to try to protect the basketball. Leading by 12, 44-32. Loretta with it, 2.49 to go. It's desperation time now for the Lady Mustangs. Through the lane, running with it goes Barrington. Shot missed on the floor. They battled for it and pulling it out of there is Warden. She gets it loose, but now picks it back up in the backcourt. Well, Tim, they took it to him. It just wouldn't fall. The tough team to come back on, a team as disciplined as Jackson County. They've been down this road many times. Their 16th trip to the state tournament. Now, for these girls, that didn't mean a lot other than the fact they were here last year Tradition. and the year before. And the elders expect them to be here. They do. Warden putting on a little bit of dribbling ex exhibition out front. Gives it out to Coe. They spin it out front to Scantlin. They're going to run the full delay near the two-minute mark right now. And they've got several girls that can handle it. The Warden's the one I want with. There's almost an over and back. Did it hit that line? It hit the line. But nope. that's where the little thin stripes are. No call. Brooklyn Apple finally with 151 to go. Stepping out to make the foul is Haley Farrington for Loretta. Team foul number six. So we'll shoot one plus one after the next foul, which I'm betting will come here in the next four or five seconds. Yeah, you've got to have quick steals or quick fouls. And any time getting off is not good. Warden in the backcourt attacks Coe. Reaches, no call. Warden all the way through. Shot up and good by Hensley. The, again, Caroline Warden made the play, Joe, by the penetration inside. Hensley got it, and she's just too strong when she gets it there to stop her. Not only is Warden a good dribbler, she's a very good passer, and you're right. Hensley is too strong to stop there. John's back in for Loretta, replacing... Sermons. Hensley could go to double figures with this free throw. Biggest lead of the contest right now as it rolls in. 47-32, 140 to go in the contest. Farrington to Johns, back to Farrington. Lob it inside, tried to go through the zone, good, and finally picked up by Farrington. Shot left side, Burden hit the side of the backboard, got it back, put it off the glass and scores. Timeout, Loretta. Let's hang on to it right here. 125 to go, 47-34. Coach Greg Tibbs calls a quick timeout. Joe, let's talk a little strategy. What can you say in that Loretta bench? Well, and hey, girls, we got to have it. When it's thrown in, we can't let any time run off the clock. We want to dictate and maybe let, if we're going to let them catch it and foul, it's got to go to the worst free throw shooters. And all these teams have scouted each other and know what they do. It's you got to have quick steals or quick fouls and then you got to go to the hole or either drop a three quick everything has to be done quick and if you're Jackson County you're going to let the air out of it you want your best free throw shooters handling the ball you tell people how many timeouts you've got in case you can't inbound the ball and time is your ally. Jackson County one of those traditional teams Joe you can watch them in warm ups 
they've got the form. They know where the elbow is supposed to be. They know where that wrist is supposed to pop. This team is going to shoot free throws well, I would think, coming down the stretch. They, they lead by 13 with 125 to go. A lot of a lot of things have to happen right now for Loretta. A lot of things, and it has to happen in a hurry. Yeah, I can say this about Jackson County. Repetition is a key word at their practices. Full court pressure coming from Loretta. A 2-2-1 two, two, press. And they'll throw it in bounds to Warden right now. Stands. No hurry. To the front court. Broke it easily. They'll spin it back out front. Won't attack the basket at all. Scantlin, they understand the clock is the friend now. They don't need to score. Bump out front, no call. Behind the back goes Warden through the lane from five feet in front. She scores. She has put on a very good show handling the ball. Got a great crossover and behind the back move. Warden has 17 to lead all scores if we go inside of a minute. 49-34. Jackson County on top, and we've got a travel call as Hemmings tried to make a quick move. And was called for the travel. Remember what the late John Wooden said, be quick, but don't hurry. Jackson County. Apple. Let's see how Loretta plays it here. Here's a quick foul. They're going to play all the way out. And Warden will go to the free throw line to shoot one plus one after being fouled by Becca Brody. Brody played a long time on those two fouls. This is her third one. She had two very early in the contest. Tim may have waited a little long to start the fouling game and uh, let a lot of time get off this clock. Warden with the one plus one. No good. Rebound quickly pulled out of there by Hemming to the front court. She runs. Cut off. Johns in the lane. A little runner up front. No good. Rebound pulled out of there by Farrington. Missed the shot again. This time Apple will pull it out for for Jackson County. Long pass down the floor. It's loose, picked up by Loretta, and we've got a foul called. I think that will go against Hope Scantlin, maybe? No, it says foul goes against John. Scantlin will go to the free throw line. Ashley Johns. Well, I knew it had to be against Loretta because there's only two team fouls on Jackson County at this point. 32.4. As Scantlin will shoot one plus one. Up and good. She has five. Pretty safe to say now Jackson County will take on Union City tomorrow at 5.30 in the final semifinal contest of the game. Contrasting styles and sizes tomorrow. Money the second time. 51-34. Quickly down the floor, Loretta. Johns fakes a three. Inside it goes to Burton. Spinning left hand, no good. Rebound pulled off by Hensley. We're down to 15 seconds. Warden, foul. And very quickly, Greg Tips will get several players off of his bench. I see Kirsten Moore. See if we can't get all these players identified. Daisy Huntley. Looks like Kayla Wallace set to check in. And a full regiment of Jackson County players. And that gives all these young ladies a chance to play on the championship floor. And with Jackson County, they'll be returning tomorrow. And you want to, you know, that's kind of like dangling the carrot in front of a horse or something. You want them to come back next year. Tiona Pruitt in along with uh, Brittany Ellis. Hannah Raglan. I'm going to miss somebody. I'm sorry. Chelsea Norris. Free throw was missed. Loretta down the floor. In the corner, Hemming, baseline, runner, foul called. Foul will go against Brittany Ellis with 6.2. Hemming with eight points in the contest. Would love to go to double figures in what will be her final game of her high school career. The senior, 5'8", will shoot two free throws. It's good. And some more new players coming in, Tim. Emma Brody in, Riley Littrell in, and a Gieski in. Is that Claudia Warden in? I for, think so. For Jackson County. And both free throws good. Up the floor running, Jackson County. Three seconds, two seconds. Firing up a three is Emma Brody. And that will be your final score. 52-35, Jackson County punches its ticket to the semifinals to take on Union City tomorrow. We're going to take a two-minute break. We'll come back, give you stats, 
kind of cat flies today and talk about tomorrow along the TWSAA network. Hello. The 2012 Blue Cross Basketball Championships are brought to you by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee, proud corporate sponsor of the TWSAA, and by the Governor's Highway Safety Office, who reminds you don't drink and drive, and by your local Tennessee public television stations, proud host of the 2012 Blue Cross Basketball Championship. Hey, want to take a look at this? Thanks to Blue Cross's Walking Works for Schools program, Tennessee kids have walked over 17 million miles in the past five years. That's enough for 35 trips to the moon and back. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee is for Tennessee. Committed to getting kids walking and healthy. Get involved at bcbst.com slash impact. Take me home tonight. You can choose the back seat. Or... We'll choose one for you. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program and participate in the TSS AA Network, go to tssaanetwork.com/sbp.